Jess Phillips joining us uh, now. Shall we start with that? Uh, where, where are you on assisted dying? Uh, so I will, uh, as I did last time, I will vote for assisted dying on uh, Friday this week. Can you explain to us in a bit more detail why why that is? I know that a, a lot of your constituencies don't constituents don't necessarily uh, agree with you, and there does appear to be a, a groundswell building now of uh, Labour MPs and grandees, including Gordon Brown, who think it's a bad idea. Look, I, I fundamentally all my life have believed in a person's right to have choice over their body. Um, that is a fundamental principle that I hold. But um, also, uh, I have I've listened to my constituents over the, the last number of weeks, and this isn't the first time this has come up. This is a conversation that has been had for many years uh, from both perspectives. Um, I think that the bill that has been pro proposed is a good one, um, and I feel confident in... Um, uh, it, in its current form, but also confident in the parliamentary process that will roll out um, post uh, Friday if it passes to ensure that it is the best it can be for our country. But look, fundamentally, I, I mean, I have watched people die in hideous pain. I, uh, in my 20s, watched my mother die with very little dignity or choice over how that was done. Um, uh, my family are currently uh, going through a particular issue around uh, somebody who is terminally ill and how we manage that best for her children. Um, I just fundamentally think that a person has the right to make those choices. Thank you for that explanation. Domestic Violence and Safeguarding Minister, let's uh, talk to you with that uh, hat on. Um, I know you want to talk to us about spiking. Spiking is basically already um, illegal. So what, what steps are you taking to, to uh, enhance that? So while it is currently illegal, it, it fits under a number of different uh, crime types and what campaigners uh, and victims have told us over the years is that that has been uh, confusing and to raise the profile of this within police forces to ensure that spiking incidences are taken seriously and can be acted upon, uh, we will be making a specific uh, criminal um, uh, uh, charge of uh, of spiking, but also what we are going to be doing is rolling out training to the nighttime economy, which is why I'm in a pub. I don't want you to think that I'm normally in the pub at 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's been known, Kay, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> not, not, recently. Sister. <laughs> not recently, um, but uh, we will be rolling out um, training to bar staff uh, across the nighttime economy and door staff across the nighttime economy to help with the evidence gather, to help support victims and to spot perpetrator behaviour in order to prevent it. We're also uh, working on changing the regime of how the data is collected because at the moment, actually, we don't have uh, the accurate data about the kind of spiking that people um, fall victim to, uh, whether that's um, this needle spiking, drink spiking, and I have to say, like, vape spiking has uh, become a thing which obviously it doesn't seems unusual to me but that is what um the the research is telling us what should the maximum punishment be um sorry there's a fly in front of my face um the the i mean uh, we, the law will roll out uh, and there is a sentencing review that is currently going on about all the crime types that fall into uh, the sort of violence against women and girls uh, categories. But look, I think that if somebody purposefully seeks to harm someone else, humiliate them, uh, cause them distress uh, and even to you know, immobilise them for other uh, crimes, that very severe punishments need to be uh, metered out. Uh, it doesn't matter. if Even if I put, you know, life imprisonment on this, actually what we need to work on is the people coming forward, people feeling confident to come forward, people uh, then uh, the detection rates being better and police responses being able to, to actually deal with it. Um, so how the sentencing regime will work, will be uh, discussed as this bill uh, that the spiking crime will go into rolls out in Parliament. But you do think that uh, it should carry a, a significant uh, prison term? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do absolutely think it should carry... It, you know, the, the risk to people... Also, if, if you spike somebody's drink or you, you know, or vape, if uh, that is now a thing... 
you don't know anything about their health profile. You don't know what that might do to them. And uh, funnily enough, in the pub that I'm in right now, uh, it's two minutes away from uh, a part of the nighttime economy where I watched my friend in front of me uh, many years ago just be absolutely fine to being completely and utterly incapacitated on the floor um, of uh, the toilets uh, in the nighttime economy. Now, here at this pub, Norton's, in Digbeth in Birmingham, they have already been training their staff uh, on uh, things like safer dancing schemes where they've trained their staff to look out for perpetrator behaviour and to intervene. Now, that's the kind of thing that is actually going to change women's experience of the nighttime economy. This isn't just about you know, making sure that people go to prison for long enough time. I want women to feel safe when they're out and about. I don't want them to have to be second guessing safety planning with their mates, which is what everybody has to do. Yeah. Uh, talk to me while I've got you about um, the CBI story in many of the papers today. Um, they are saying that uh, many of their members are less likely to take a chance on hiring as a result of the announcements uh, in the previous budget. Half employees, um, are looking to cut jobs and two-thirds are reconsidering recruitment uh, plans. It's not gone well, this budget, has it? Well, look, the reality is, and if you were to go to one of the local hospitals here in Birmingham, you'd probably be waiting 17 hours. The alternative choice was more austerity. And so if we want investment into our NHS that gets Britain working, that stops the million young people um, who are currently out of work, that takes investment and that difficult decisions have to be made. I wouldn't want anyone, any business, to feel like they couldn't be investing in their staff. Um, but the... The alternative was more austerity, and I can tell you now that services in Birmingham couldn't have taken any more austerity, and it would have made our city, our country, sicker. But the CBI is saying, as a direct result, it's taking people's jobs. Look, I mean, I think that we will have to wait and see. The, we are also investing, like, hundreds of millions into investing into new jobs. Um, so I, I think... The, the difficult decisions have to be made and time is going to have to tell about exactly how that rolls out. But we are investing in growth in this country um, and we huge investment into the kind of industries where people can have good jobs for life. OK. Before I let you go, you're in touch with popular culture, of course. You've got a thought on this Band-Aid 40 song? Oh, gosh, I'm not that in touch. What, what is it? I don't even know anything about it. Oh, you've made me feel like I'm out of the loop now. Is it Lots just the same people. song 40 years it's later? It's the same song, but apparently it's not uh, stood the test of time. And people like Ed Sheeran are saying, don't include me in that song because it's inappropriate uh, to, um, in some ways, people are suggesting belittle people from that continent in some of the lyrics. Look, I, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to take uh, advice from those who know much more about international development than me. I think that good intentions sometimes can be misplaced uh, is probably uh, where I would say on this. But to be honest, I quite like it. Although every time they say the line, there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas, my husband reminds me of the top of Kilimanjaro. Yeah, and the Simeon Mountains, of course, as well. Um, and they talk about no rivers flowing, then there's the Nile there's and the Congo. But, you know, yeah, there's plenty of rivers in Africa. It's Geographically, <laughs> it's inaccurate, I think we can say for certain. Yeah, they don't know it's Christmas. Well, they knew it was before we did. But there we are. It's good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.